Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs down Mandala. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to, I'm going to assume, a Buddhist Tibetan temple where players are going to be collaborating to create two beautiful mandalas. Now, mandalas are these wonderful sand sculptures that are famous for these incredible, intricate patterns that once they're done, they get washed away uh, and sent to the river as a uh, cycle of life and death. Or something like that. The rules don't really go into too terribly much. Uh, but that's what we're going to be working on today. I and my opponent Jen over there will be contributing to these two mandalas in an abstract area control style game. So, I've already got the game set up. Both mandalas have been seeded with some sand. Some purple yellow sand over here and some yellow and black sand over here. I got a hand of six more sand cards that I can use to build these mandalas up. So does Jen. And also, as far as setup, I have two secret cards. A black and a yellow uh, card that are in my cup. These are what I will score points off of at the end of the game. The more cards I have here, the better. But the problem is, at this point, I don't know how much a yellow or a black card is going to be worth. Over the course of the game, I will be adding cards to my river. Starting over here and working my way up. And Jen will be doing the same, adding cards to her river. If I were to eventually add, say, a red card to this slot, that means every red card in my cup at the end of the game is worth one point. And then later on, if I were to add an orange card here, every orange card I have is worth two points. So, whoever has the most points wins, and controlling your river and your cup and the mandalas is what it's all about. So, let's get going. This is a two-player only game, and on your turn, you're going to do one of three actions. You are either going to take a single card from your hand and place it to the mountain of either mandala. Uh, the center strip is the mountain. This is a place that both of us, both players, can play cards here. And if you play a single card to the mountain as a reward, you get to draw three more cards to your hand, which is very important. Because if you run out of cards, you're not going to get much uh, mandala building done. So that's the main way you refill is by putting cards into the mountain. Now, instead of that, I could play multiple cards to my field, again, on either one of these mandalas. So right now, I've got two green cards. What I do is, I pick a color, and I can play as many cards of that color as I've got in my hand, up to as many, and I can put it over here. And this is the area control thing. I am now in control of this mandala, because I've played two cards to my field, and so far Jen hasn't played any cards to hers. You know, so I also have two purples. So I could have played two purples over here, and I'm trying to gain control over that. Now, I didn't have to. I could just play one card, and I still have majority on this mandala, and maybe I'm saving my green for something else. Um, but the tricky thing is, when you're playing to your field, you are not getting to redraw cards. And so, sooner or later, you've got to play something to the mountain to be able to refill your hand. Now, the third thing you can do is something you never want to have happen. You can discard as many cards as you want of a single color to the discard pile and then draw back up. This is something you do if you find yourself boxed in and you cannot play either to the mountain or to your own field. If you're in that situation, then you have no choice. You've got to discard one or more cards of a given color and then redraw, and that's your whole turn. And that's terrible. Now, why would you ever do that? Of course, you would always play play here. Well, here's the problem. There is one key restriction when we are creating these mandalas. A given color can only exist in the mountain, or my field, or Jen's field. So, coincidentally, as far as setup, since both of the mountains of these two mandalas have a yellow card, that means I've got a yellow card. I am not allowed to play it to my field, because yellows are already in the mountain. The only place I could play this yellow would be to add it to the mountain, which means I would then get more cards into my hand. Um, and the interesting thing is, let's start out, I will go ahead and play these two green cards I've got. I'll play it to my field. And now, like I said, I've got control of this mandala, although Jen might end up playing more. And green cards, from now on, can only be played to my field. Only I can play green cards here. Jen could still play purple cards or red cards. Yellow cards or black cards must be played to the mountain. And uh, I'm the king of green over here. And that was my turn. Uh, because I don't get to draw any more up. At the end of my turn, whenever you place cards, either into the mountain or onto your field, you check to see, was the mandala you built 
you helped build completed. And what that means is, is there an example of each of the six colors? If there were, we would immediately destroy this mandala, casting the sand into the river, which is how we start scoring points. Now, there are only three colors here, so we still need the purple and the red and the, uh, oh, what? What's the other one we need? The purple, the red, and the orange. So this isn't ready to score yet. My turn is over. It is Jen's turn. Of course, I have no idea what card she's got in her hand. Let's say Jen decides that she will play a single purple over here. All right. So I am still winning. And you know, maybe she had more purples, and she just decided not to play them. But one thing, Jen would not have been allowed to play her purple over here. She could have played it to the mountain over here, since there's already existing purple. She could have played it to this mountain, and if she had done either of those things, she would have gotten to draw three cards. Although, our maximum hand size is eight, so she would have basically refilled her hand. But Jen said, nope, I may have more purples, you don't know. But now, Jen is vying for control of this mandala. And now, this mandala will be completed once somebody plays orange and red here. All right, so that was Jen's turn. So Jen is uh, trying to make a show of this one. And by doing this, Jen has prevented me from being able to play purples here. Suddenly, my purple cards are useless because she owns purple on this mandala. I can't play it to the mountain to get more cards. I can't play it to my own side. Only Jen can play purple. And my purple cards, I can't play them over here to try to get control. I, again, could add a single. When you play to the mountain, you can only add a single. I could add a single purple over here, and that would let me draw more cards into my hand, which wouldn't be bad. But um, I don't want to go gentle into that good night. I'm getting low on cards, and currently I am still the uh, top dog of this mandala. I want to maintain control of this mandala. So, I'm going to play an orange. Uh, the only orange I've got. And now, I've got three cards invested in this mandala. And I'm the clear leader. I've got three to Jen's one. And now, we've got one, two, three, four, five. As soon as somebody plays a red card, either to their field or to the mountain, this mandala will be destroyed. And we will start scoring points. Alright. So that was it. And I'm running out of cards, folks, but we'll see what I do next turn. Meanwhile, Jen, Jen's got a red. Jen could go on ahead and play this over here, but it doesn't make any sense for her to do it because she's only got one red. If she had like three reds, she might play them all, and then she would suddenly take the lead. This mandala would be scored, and Jen would get first dibs on what she wants. But it does not behoove her to help me because if she finishes this mandala, I will get the lion's share of the benefit. So I think Jen is going to turn her eye over here to the other mandala, where Jen will say, hey, you know what? I own green over there. Jen owns green over here. And so that was it for her. Now it's my turn. I have no reds. If I could have a red now, I would get it played and get it done. And remember, I cannot play these purples over here, over here, because um, you know, I can't use them. And this is how I could find myself in a situation where the only cards that I have in my hand, I'm not allowed to play at all. And that's when I have to waste a whole turn, throw some of the way, and draw. So I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do now is, because I'm in the clear lead on this mandala, I want this mandala to be more valuable. I'm going to play a single card to the mountain. And in doing that, I get to draw three. And there's that red I need. All right. So there we go. And the more cards are in the mountain, the more valuable the uh, take. Because if uh, you know, once a mandala is completed, remember, once a red gets played over here, players will take turns claiming individual colors out of the mountain and um, putting them in their river and putting them in their cup to score points at the end of the game. So now I can finish this whenever I want, and I've got some more options. Because, hey, I could start putting oranges over here. I could build this up if Jen wanted to try and make a run and take this away from me, etc., etc. So that was it for me. It is Jen's turn. And um, Jen... Well, first of all, Jen cannot play either this orange or this black to her field. She could play the black here, which means she would get to draw some more cards. And you might think, why would she do that when I'm clearly winning? Here's what's the deal. Once this mandala is going to be completed, whoever played the most cards gets to pick a color from the mountain first and take all of those. Then the other player gets to go next. So if Jen were to put this here, all she's doing is ensuring that, hey, when I eventually win this thing, I'll probably take two, and Jen will get to take two as well. And that could be pretty handy. 
And if Jen were to do this, oops, if Jen were to play a second here, not only is she setting herself up to score, even though I'm in the lead, she is giving herself one, two, three more cards. Okay, and now it is my turn. And, hmm, yes, I'd say it is time for this mandala to be completed before Jen could try to make a run and, and you know, take the lead away from me. Yeah, although what I would like to do is put, before I score this mandala, I would like to get more yellow and black cards in here. Because remember, I get first dibs. So if there are three black cards, if I had any black cards, I'd play one here so that when I win this thing, I would get three cards to score instead of two. So while I could, I could finish this right now, if I, if I went like this, hey, I'd get to draw three cards, we would um, fill up the mandala, and because I'd get the lead, I'd probably take either the two black or the two yellow, Jen would take the other one I didn't take, and then I would get the red. So I would get to score multiple things. I would get to score tw two colors, while Jen would only score one. But before then, I want to get some more yellow or black in my hand so I can make this mountain even bigger. So I am going to ignore this mandala for a while and focus on this one. Where, I, if I want to play purples, they've got to come here to the center. But I could say, hey, you own the green, I own the orange. Now, I don't have to. Again, I could have played one. Because maybe I don't care about winning. I just want to make sure that when this mandala is scored, I get something for my trouble. Uh, because if I don't have any cards when a mandala is scored, then I get nothing from the mountain. Although I can still manipulate the outcome. So I'm going to leave this here. I'm not going to play both. Because in case, I don't know what Jen's got in her hand, she might try to make a run and take this mandala away from me. So I better keep an orange over here for, to play over here just in case I need it. So I've done that. It is Jen's turn again. Right. And so yeah, Jen, if she wanted to, and this would be scary for me, I don't know this, Jen could play all three of these reds. And just like that, this mandala would be complete and Jen would win because um, Jen has four cards to my three. Although, again, Jen's not particularly interested in doing that. That's burning a lot of cards to get first dibs. Uh, she'll end up getting two cards. I'll end up getting two cards. That doesn't make much sense to her. And even if she just played one, if she played one, I'd be the one who benefits. Because I would win. I would take a pair. Jen would take a pair. And then I would get the last one. So, Jen... Here's the deal. Jen might want to hold on to these because if I start building up this mountain and making it more valuable, Jen then might decide to say, jump in, surprise me. And so I think she's going to hold on to these to have a surprise over there. And in meanwhile, well, here's the problem. Otherwise, Jen's got orange. Jen's cannot play these oranges here, nor can she play one of them here because I own orange on this mandala. So, uh, this is a problem. This is a real problem. All right, so Jen could uh, take one of her precious reds that she was holding to be able to snag control dominance over here in case this gets more valuable. Oh, this is sad. She's going to give one up. Is she going to give one up to own red on this mandala? Because again, if she does this, the mandala is over. She will have paid two cards to get two scoring cards. I'll have paid three cards to get two scoring cards. That's not bad, because ultimately I had to pay more cards and I got the same return. So maybe Jen does just want to go ahead and finish this right now because I will have overpaid and she will come out ahead in this because right now, neither of us have a particularly strong interest in black or yellow. Yeah, you know what? If Jen had a, uh, you know, if Jen had the, uh, what else would it be? Right, we've got the purple, the, red, the orange. What do we need over here? We need the black. If Jen had a black card, I suspect she would either play it over here so that she could make the mountain bigger because she knows she could win this if she later on played these. Or she would play it over here to start making this a bit more attractive. But since all she's got is oranges that she can't play anywhere because I control orange, so she must play a red. She can either build this mountain up, build up her control over here, or end this mandala, which is what she's going to do. And I mean, she could burn through all of these and get the clear lead, but that just means she gets first pick. She's not going to do that. With one card, she's going to get two scoring cards. And so, uh, Jen has played a card, um, and she didn't play to the mountain because that would have benefited me, not her. And now, at the end of her turn, we realize that yes, one, two, three, four, five, six colors, this mandala is going to be washed away. So all these cards, remember, I have the majority. I had the most cards. So I get first dibs. Do I want to take these yellows or these black? Now let's come back over here. I Coincidentally, I already have a yellow and a black waiting to score. 
So these are equally valuable to me. Do I have, what do I have in my hand? I can see there's a yellow over there that's gonna be that's gonna eventually be scored over here. So for that reason, for that reason, I'm gonna take the black. All right, so I'm taking I'm scoring, I'm taking all these. If there were more black, I would get more of them. Now, when the first time you score a given color out of a mandala, you take one of the cards you scored and you put it in the river. So what this means is now every black card I have in my cup at the end of the game is worth one point. So, as you can see, I've got two points. My yellows have not been determined to be worth anything yet. I'm thinking later on, if I can win this mandala and take this yellow and put it here, then the yellow I already have will suddenly be worth two points. So, I have chosen to try... I mean, black uh, sand cards are the least valuable cards in the world for me now. I've, I've set myself up for that. I am less interested in winning black cards, uh, and which is, I mean, which is why I'd rather win yellow later on. Meanwhile, so that's how I did it. I took one and put it here, and the remainder of the colors I took go to scoring. Jen, meanwhile, yellows are worth one point to her, and she's kind of bummed about that because she just added another yellow card to her starting hand of three cards. So she's sitting on three points. She would have much rather, because she already had two yellow cards, had made yellow worth more later on, but I didn't know that. Uh, and so that was... So that worked out, and... That was the end of Jen's turn. She triggered the end, and once a mandala is emptied, we immediately draw two more cards so it can start to be built again. It is now my turn. And all of a sudden, we have a wide open opportunity here. We can't play purples or greens to our fields. <laughs> yeah, so my purples... Hmm. And I'm getting low on cards. And interesting, I still now have this red. I was having to play on use the red to end it myself, but Jen ended it ahead of time. Let's go on ahead and say, I don't want to give up. I'm just going to play another orange over here. I was holding on to that in case I needed it over here, but now it doesn't matter, so I'll play my other orange over here and kind of do a wait and see for what Jen does. So, we are now tied for this mandala, and we're waiting for the black and the red to appear over here. Jen's turn. Okay, so... Um, Jen can't play these oranges. She could play these reds. So she could go on ahead and play a red, and suddenly she's winning. And now when a black comes over there... Or I think Jen is going to try to take control over that mandala. That was it. And Jen is running out of cards now. Only two red cards in her hand. This could be dangerous. Because if on her next turn she were not able to play these red cards, she would be stuck and she'd have to discard them and draw. But Jen knows she's safe. Because even if I played red to one or the other, Jen could still play red to the other place. So she's safe. My turn. Okay. So I've still got these purples. Let's go on ahead and make this mandala a little bit more interesting. Now there are two purples and one yellow to be scored there. Because I played to the mountain, I get to draw. One, two, three. Jen's turn. Okay. Jen says... Hmm. That is interesting. Now, I've made this a little bit more attractive uh, because by putting this here. Jen says she will play one red. Now, what you are not, even though Jen has two cards, in theory, she should be able to play both of these and get a real domination. You are never allowed to take an action that would leave you with no cards in hand. So Jen cannot play both of these reds, but she will play one. And this is dangerous, too. This is dangerous. I mean, Jen is taking control so that she can get the double purples and leave me with the one yellow. Because uh, she would rather win this and get two cards instead of one. Plus, remember, yellows are only worth one point to her. So she's less interested in winning those yellows. But here's the deal. If she does this on my turn, if I have a red, and if I play this red to my field, when it comes back to her, she will not be able to play her red over here, because I'll own red. She won't be able to play her red over here, uh, because she'll be out of cards. Um, because really, this other red, she wants to play it to this mountain, because then she'd get to draw more cards up. It is very dangerous for Jen to play this, because because I know she's got one card. I don't know what it is. But if I lock red out, she would really be... So I think this is too dangerous. Jen is not going to try to take the majority. Jen is instead going to take one of her reds and make this mountain more attractive. There are three colors to win over here. And Jen gets one, two, three more cards. Okay. Back to me. Very interesting. Suddenly, I can no longer play red here. All right. So now we're just waiting for the yellow and the black. And then this mandala will be scored again. I have no yellow. I have no black. I have reds that I, I could play here and make this mountain even more valuable. I can't play these reds down here to get control. 
I can't play these purples down here to control. I cannot play any of these cards to get control over this mandala. And that means I'm in danger. Because uh, if Jen could uh, pl you know, play the rest of the colors such that everything is here and I don't have anything, well then, Jen will get to score. And I will still get to manipulate stuff. But, yeah, as it is... All I can do is make this mountain more valuable. So I have to turn away. I need to come over here. I need to get some more cards. I can't play this green here. I could play these reds. And that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We would still need the uh, black. I need to find a black card. I need more control. I'm going to make this mountain even more valuable. Remember, you can only play one. And that gives me three more cards. A green. Oh my gosh! No! All right. Back to Jen. Jen has black. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, baby. Right, so this needs a yellow. All right, Jen's going to play a black here. Now, if yellows get played, it's over for this mandala. And she gets to draw three more. One, two, three. Now, this is a dangerous move for Jen, because for all she knows, I've got three yellows in my hand, and I could play them here, and then I would be the winner. But Jen is hoping I don't. You spend a lot of time trying to guess what your opponent has in hand. And unbeknownst to Jen, I have one yellow. Wow. Okay. If I had had no yellows, Jen, on her next turn, would have played this yellow here. And all the colors are here. She would have won this whole mandala. But fortunately for me, I did get a yellow. I think I better play it. Boom. So, the second time, we finished another mandala here. Because we've got one, two, three, four... All right, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this mandala is still waiting to be completed, and this is where all the big rewards are. But I just played this. This mandala is finished. And unfortunately, Jen is winning. She will get first dibs. Let's see here. Now, all she has is yellow. So uh, with any of these cards, what she's going to be doing is she's going to be saying that card is worth two points. She would like to get this purple, but she would like this purple to be worth three points so that she could win these three purples over here. So she's going to take something other than purple and then hope she can get purple So for the three-year. So Jen will go on ahead. Now, this is interesting. Jen knows I don't like black. So she figures I'm not going to take this card because if I take it, I already have a black here, so it'll just go here. It'll just be worth one point. She figures, um, you know, she, she knows I don't want that one. So, you know what? I don't think she wants to mess around. She's just going to go on ahead. Getting the first choice on a color, she takes the purple. Purples are worth two points to her. This is a six-point mountain for her. She can get these three cards now. Because she, she figured, you know what? If she didn't take it, I would have taken it because there's all these purples just waiting to be won over there. So Jen has chosen one. Now I'm going to chose one. Now here's the interesting thing. Say Jen had been the one to play the last card and she'd put this in the mountain and drawn more cards, etc., etc., Oh, by the way, has Jen gone over her hand limit? One, two, four, five, six. No, no, she's fine. Say Jen had done this. When we started resolving this mandala, as the winner, Jen would have picked one, and then I would have picked one, not to take for scoring, but to discard. I would still take stuff, but I would just be taking things to deny them for Jen. But as it is, I did get it on the ground floor, so I'm going to grab one of these things. And, I, yeah, Jen's right. I don't want these black cards. I already have enough of them. I will fix it so that green cards are worth two points to me. And now Jen says, I will... Jen says, I'll make red cards worth three points. And now Jen has left me this one. I can't already put it on my river, so I can't make black worth three. So I just scored one point out of all that. And these get washed away. And so that was that. And now Jen wants to win r purples and reds. She doesn't care so much about it. And there's these here, and we all know it. I triggered the end of that round. So a new mountain starts getting built. It is Jen's turn. And Jen does not want to mess around. She wants to win this. I mean, heck. All right, how many colors do we have here? We got one, two, th uh, one, two, three, four. So we're still missing the reds and we're missing the blacks. Jen, in two turns, could make this thing done. And she could uh, get the big sweet purple for her. And because if I get that purple, I'll make those purples worth three points. And if I win this, I'll make these worth three, and I'll have scored six points. So Jen is desperate to not let me win these purples. Even though they're only worth two to her, they'll be worth a lot more to me. And Jen can really, she could really dominate this mandala. But she'd burn through almost her entire hand, which means she'd have to start playing to the mountain. 
But she doesn't... Let's see. She doesn't have to burn them all. She could just take, like, two. So Jen is putting a strong lead. I would have to work very hard to take this mandala. And let's see. So what could I do? Well, hey, I've got a couple of reds. I could tie her. And oh my gosh. Now things are getting crazy and we're just waiting for one black. Uh, because again, this cache of purple is a big deal. It's worth six points to me. It's uh, worth six points to Jen. All right. So I just made a big counter move. And here's the deal. If Jen has a black card, I don't. So that was pretty much all I could do was just play those. I could have I could have played the orange instead, but I made the big move. And I'm hoping Jen doesn't have a black card. Because if she does, and she does, Jen is going to finish this thing. This for Finally, this mandala will be finished. And Jen could put this here, which makes this a more attractive. Hey, somebody will get the purple, somebody will get the black, somebody will get the yellow. But she doesn't want to, and she'll get three cards. But she knows, here's the thing. If she puts this here to draw three more cards, we're tied. Who wins in a tie? Who gets first dibs in a tie? The player who didn't finish. So if Jen puts this here, creates a tie, I'll get first dibs, I'll take the purples. Jen says no. She finishes it. Boom! Nuke. Jen scores six points worth of purple, and I have just made yellows worth three points for me. And that was a big move. Um, right. And uh, so, a new one comes out. And it's my turn. And hey, I want these yellows. Ye Jen doesn't care about yellows. They're only worth one point. They're worth three points to me. That's six points. But Jen knows that. She wants to take these yellows because that's six points I'm not getting. Okay. So that was Jen's turn. It is my turn. And I've got two fresh new mandalas to continue working on. I could go either way. And the game is going to continue until one of two things happens. Either somebody completely fills up their river, or we make it through this deck of cards. And then, uh, when it's all done, we'll reveal all the stuff in our cups. We'll line them up to see how many points we've got. The river cards don't count for points, just the ones that are in our cups. And somebody will be declared the winner of Mandala. And that's the basics, folks. And uh, in case you're wondering what Jen and I think of the game, well, we love it. Oh my gosh, this game is amazing! It just kind of came out of nowhere and totally blew our socks off. Uh, Jenna, we played this a few times now, and oh my, wow. Here's the deal, folks. I already did my top 10 games for 2019 back in December. I always do that. And the four months later, in April, I do a follow-up, because there's always a few games from the given year that I haven't played yet when I make my preliminary top 10. This is the reason I do those, because I think Mandala is going to creep into my top 10 games of 2019. I wish I'd played it sooner, so I could have crowed about it sooner. But wow, there is so much goodness in this box. There is so much going on. It is brilliant. Um, you know, the the way that, uh, you know, you know the, the, the Battle of Wits. This is definitely a Battle of Wits. It's a two-player only game. And that's a really common thing in two-player only games, to basically have area control. Fights. You know, I'm going back to battle lines, uh, you know, or um, lost cities, and I mean, there's so many of these games where, oh, I play cards to my side of the line, you play cards to your side of the line. Whoever uh, ultimately, when things are resolved, has the most wins. You know, whatever it is. The beautiful thing about this game is, yeah. It is definitely a battle for dominance uh, in this really peaceful and tranquil and meditative setting. Yet we are just like really trying to get in each other's heads. And oh my god, what are the chances you've got that red? Because if I play this other thing here and wait one more turn... Um, but the beautiful part is, after a, you know, a thing is scored and there is a clear winner and a loser, that's not the case. There's two winners. Both players end up getting stuff out of the mountain. And yeah, you might not have gotten what you wanted, but you'll still get something. Something that you seeded into that mountain, or your opponent seeded in that mountain, that will go onto your river, go into your cup, and help you score points at the end of the game. And that is so wonderful for Care Bear players like me and Jen, that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. It is brilliantly implemented and just makes I mean this game is infinitely replayable anyway and if it had been like any other two air two player area control game they wouldn't have gone that extra mile but the fact that um everybody is you know eyeing both and there's the fact there's two mandalas and they're both building up with different things different scoring opportunities that are radically different you don't care about yellows yellows are worth five points to me that means we both care about yellows because I uh, you know vying for control over those every five points I don't get at the end of the game is effectively points you earn, so the zero-sum nature of this makes everything so tense. But
but it all comes down to what you have in your hand. And, you know, t taking gambles, taking huge gambles, trying to, you know, just to push the envelope a little bit more so you can make for a better, because I think I can win this one. I totally think I can. And can I push it even a little bit more, not knowing what you've got in your hand? And then you've waited, and then boom, you sweep in with a big suite of cards. I didn't think you had it. And then suddenly all that work I did, you end up taking it, and I get, well, I get seconds, which is still something. Oh, boy. Uh, you know, the game, of course, is gorgeous. You know, these lovely uh, mandala uh, designs. I mean, look at pictures of them on Google, folks. They are so gorgeous in real life. I don't know anything about the notion of a mountain versus fields. I assume that's based on real um, Buddhist... Uh, naming conventions for how they make these, but I do like the thematic touch that the whole point of these in real life is they make these beautiful sculptures or, you know, patterns, designs that take them hours, days, weeks, months. And then when they're done, it's all part of the process. They wipe it away. And, uh, you know, as you know, part of that eternal cleansing birth and death cycle, that's the real world thing. And that theme comes through because we build up, we build up, we build up, and then we wash it all away. And some of it ends up in our river. And I, I you know, I, 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 they didn't have to. They could have made this 100% pure abstract, but I really appreciate going the extra mile and finding a theme that fit the actual mechanisms. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the uh, the theme actually informed the mechanisms. Uh, you know, but you know, the cards are lovely. The gameplay is crackerjack. One of the best of the year. Um, it's really nice. They didn't come with a board, but it came with this lovely cloth player mat, which makes this game super portable. Forget about uh, carrying the box around. It's just a tiny deck of cards and a piece of cloth that you could throw into your backpack and play this game anywhere on uneven surfaces and stuff like that. Makes it an ultimate travel game if you're two players. My only complaint about this game, and it's a stupid little one, is you need to shuffle these cards very, very well uh, because, of course, you end up having you know a whole bunch of uh, kind of uh, of a kinds uh, you know, all clumped together as part of final scoring. You really need to shuffle this, and these cards are really high quality. They're very stiff and very difficult to shuffle. But that's it. That's the only complaint I can have in what is otherwise one of the best two-player only games I have ever played. And the reason for that is because it bucks the trend that 95% of all other two-player only games uh, you know, follow, which is the battle line method of, oh, well, there can only be one winner here Everybody wins, and it's not until we re you know reveal our final cups that we see who is the real winner, and that makes Mandala something very special. And that's the rundown, folks. Thanks very much for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye.